Second time we're bringing him on. We hope uh, he's on all the time. Mick Cronin, UCLA basketball coach, two-time conference uh, coach of the year. Um, you'd, you'd had about a streak of 12, 13 straight tournaments. You'd been in this thing forever. It's been fun to watch. And my takeaway initially was it's a bit diluted. Uh, I don't think it's terribly good at the middle or bottom, but at the top, it's really good. I had talked to Mark Few maybe on or off the air a month ago, and he's like, I don't want to play Purdue again. <laughs> Are you surprised? You know the Midwest well. Yeah. There were questions about, are they too Zach Eady dependent? Are they athletic enough? Are you shocked Purdue's here? No, no, not at all. Because, they, you know, they've go back again, you and I, you know, to our era. The Pistons had to go through losing to the Celtics. Right. The Bulls had to go through losing to the Pistons. Yeah. You know, so Purdue's been through some tough times. And they've all stayed together. And they have an elite coach in Matt Painter. And they have the best player in the country. Yeah. So that it, it, it would have surprised me if they would have lost because of what they've been through. I think too many people say, uh, well, they don't know how to win. Uh, they were young. Give them a chance. You understand last year they started two freshman guards. Yeah. That's all, you know, unless they're lottery picks, how are you going to make the Final Four with two freshman guards? So Edie's size is significant, <laughs> especially in college. But UConn's actually a bigger team everywhere else. Yes. I kind of feel like they'll hang around. But... Uh, Hurley says this. We're a lot. He's like, we, it may take us 18, 20 minutes. I but read that. Yeah. We are. A, we bring a lot. I always felt this way with Alabama and Saban. You could hang for a half, but the velocity of athletes yeah. over the course of three hours, they wear you out. Who do you like tonight? Uh, I mean, I would be shocked if Purdue won. I think U UConn's a distinctive favorite be, for a couple reasons. One, Klingon is the the only guy that has a chance to guard Edie one on one and slow him down a little. Exactly. So, you know, to me, the Purdue's supporting cast is relying upon the fact that you have to pay so much attention to Zach Eady that they make open shots. Like, they're, you know, their supporting cast isn't what UConn's is. I mean, right. you know, C Caravan is an sh unbelievable shot maker off screens. They have two guards. Colin, do you understand UConn's two starting guards combined? Tristan Newton and Cam Spencer tonight will be there. I looked this up for us. 290 and 91st college game combined. What a huge edge. Two fifth year players. I mean, <laughs> exactly. I mean, very Villanova feeling. Yeah, and even more with the fifth year. They're right. both fifth year guys. You know, they got every they just got everything. Castle's a lottery pick, but he's not a he's he, he's not like a down the road. He's gonna no, he's a tough dude. Like that. You know, his dad played. I mean, Castle's a real guy. I mean, he's a productive freshman. Caravan's the glue guy, though. See, when your four-man is an elite shooter, I mean, it just changes everything. I mean, it's new wave basketball, right, right? right. with that stretch four. Yeah. They're just parts fit. But Klingon, I mean, if he doesn't get in foul trouble, but they have Johnson, I mean, they're just uh, the best team. Yes, I think top to bottom. Felt like South Carolina yesterday. Yeah. They had a 30 nothing bench advantage. You're talking about different level. You know, I, I was saying some athletes uh, ride the wave. Caitlin Clark felt like the wave. Is that I, I read a story that Gina Oriema had seen her, kind of passed on her. It's okay. People develop. Some people are great at 12. Some develop. We've seen that in all sorts of sports. Um, when you watch Caitlin Clark, as a guy who does this for a living, get, we know she can shoot. What's the second thing you look oh, at yeah. and go, well, that's elite? Passing. I was surprised. Obviously, we're busy, so you don't have much time, right? But it's like, what's what's going on, you know, with, with this girls player at Iowa, yeah. right? So you turn it on, and her passing's elite. I don't. If she would have had, uh, not to disparage anybody, but her supporting cast would, you know, like not as good. Steph Curry's. She's a st college version of Steph Curry. She's not the best athlete, but she's the best shooter and an elite passer. Yeah. The question for me, and that I don't know this because I don't know the WNBA as well, but I know they're they're 28, 29, 30. You know, will her, will she be able to get all that done against better athletes, against more size? You know, how was she, how much will that translate? I mean, that that's the question going forward. Well, I, the one thing I do like about her, and in she is a she's a playmaker. Like a lot of scorers yeah. aren't; they're just scores. Right. She can really pass it. She can. So I, I said this earlier. Life's about connections. When I started a business three years ago, I leaned on people I knew. 
If the Lakers took Bronny James at 55, I called one NBA scout last week, and he said, listen, smart kid, plays the right way. Because of his physical f scare, he's got more. He, he's got. He's not a playmaker. He's not wildly dynamic, but he's a good athlete. Yeah. And the Lakers have no shooters. He said, so if you could find a guy off the bench, take him two years, gross. And he said, if LeBron is energized his last three years, it's not the end of the world. Your takeaway, I mean, you know, you saw him play. Could he develop into a rotational NBA guy and hit Jays? In, 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 I think in time, for sure. Yeah, yeah. The, the question is, um, I would tell you, I, I had the, the advantage. I saw him a lot in high school. Obviously, you know, yeah. with recruiting. He played with Amari Bailey. At, at Sierra Canyon, who play, you know, so I was there a lot. Um, I would tell you the whatever had whatever re went on with the heart situation. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine? How, I mean, that's how hard that is. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to imagine it wasn't like he was able to run around, stay in shape. Right. You know, you probably had to shut it down for an extended period of time. He did. To come into it's hard enough as a freshman in college basketball in this era of 20, you know, the fifth year guys. A lot of them. To come in as a freshman that had an entire summer of training. Well, he, he had no summer. He had no fall, really. And then all of a sudden, he's back on the court. So he he was a shell of what I saw it in high school. Right. So uh, he, he's. But what did you see in high school? Well, he, he, I think he was quicker, faster, more athletic. So, you know, I think, uh, you know, sitting around for five months couldn't have helped. Of course. Um, but he can shoot the ball. He's smart. He's a very good kid. I've been around him. Somebody told me he'll be great on a well-run organization because, like his dad, he makes the right play. Well, he's been trained that. Yeah, that's just habit for for him. You know, that I mean, he grew up. You imagine growing up sitting watching basketball games and, and your talking dad, to your dad. Your dad's LeBron James, but he's to you, he's your dad. But he obviously he's talking about the right play all the time. You know, the right. guy that was you know. The best passer, you know, he's he's always made the right play. Even people say they knocked LeBron. Well, he should have shot a bad shot. Why'd he pass it <laughs> to the wide open guy? Like people go on and say that stuff, like because he guy's wide open. Well, we should have, you know. Well, if the guy would have made it, you wouldn't have been criticizing him. So his dad's always been around to right play. So yeah, legacy guys too tend to, in the last 15 years, a lot of legacy guys have been uh, un, uh, maybe underrated, and now he didn't fly under the radar like Steph Curry, okay, um, like his brother, okay, that his, you know, he went to Davidson, his brother went to Liberty. Yeah. So the big advantage of if your, your parent was a good player because you've been taught the game. A lot of legacy players now. It's not taught, I mean, you know, in recruiting, like, I try to search for them. You do? Yeah, because you know how they've grown up. Like, I know why I'm here. My dad was a great high school coach. And when the season was over, he was a, he was part of the best organization in the Atlanta Braves for 20 years. They won 14 rings. Like those are the people I walk home from school. Bobby Cox is in my house, you know. So like I know the advantages I had growing up. So it's a huge advantage when you, you can grow up around that. Because not only so LeBron he talks to his dad. Who do you think his dad's friends are? Other good players, <laughs> right? I mean, look who they're. You know, look. So yeah. you're just. You're so far advanced, and you don't even know it, that by the time you're 13, how much basketball you really know. Yeah, you know, I, I, for years and years, I would hear that, um, you know, if you grow up with money, you won't have an edge. But I always felt basketball has been a suburb sport for about 15 years, and that a lot of the good programs are well-capitalized programs. They're suburban schools with money. Well... You know, we're we're in the era of where money matters now as well. But right. in in high school, look, high school um, has changed so much. You know, there was an era of, uh, you know, out here whether it was Fremont or Crenshaw, yeah. you know, Compton Centennial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now it's all private schools. Right. Same, you know, New York City, the Catholic League back then, but even there were scholarship. And but the diocese was so big there, yeah. there. But now they all go to prep schools. You know, it's just the world of of uh, scholastic basketball has really, really changed. Yeah, I want to ask you about Zach Eady again. So I, I'm a I, I think sometimes we make a mistake, and I'm guilty of this, that we forget these are young people, and everybody ages. It doesn't matter if it's actors. There, you see it in comedy. There are late bloomers. Not everybody is a John Stewart at 20. He's just clever. A lot of these com you know, comedians hit at 28, yeah. 30. And when I watched Zach Eady last year, I was like, doesn't move very well. I'm not sure he's a great closer for his size. And then I started watching him at the end of the Big Ten season. And I'm like, God, he's a way better player. 
Yeah. And uh, you've had a couple of those guys. I may Hawkins. Yeah. And is what what is the click factor? Is it because he was always big? What was the click factor, and what do you think it is with him? Well, big guys on a rule of thumb in in, in basketball, okay, and just life. You know, taller you are, it takes you longer to be coordinated. Okay. Right. You, you know, you you go watch. You know. Mick Cronin in seventh grade, I'm the same size, <laughs> right? You know, but versus some other kid, it's arms and legs. It's just going to take them time. Okay. It, it takes big guys longer for their coordination to catch up to their size. That's just, and that's been going on forever. Um, so, you know, Zach, in his case, I'm sure it's the same thing. It's just taking time. It's taking hard work. Then in his case, I think he, he said he worked really worked on his diet, his conditioning. Yeah. You know, Matt Painter. He looks a, more cut. Yeah, much more. Matt Matt's a friend of mine. It, you know, he wasn't going to get. It's a great example. You know, for staying in school. It, you know, everybody now wants to say, well, this guy. It, everything's the microwave society. Right. You got to give people a chance to develop as a player. That's right. You know, give him a chance. I mean, you know, look what's happened. Now he's going to be a lottery pick, maybe. I mean, I don't know if you've looked. I mean, the boards have him all the way up. I saw the the, the, the one was at 13, maybe. Oh, I had him at 17 last time. There you go. Well, I, well I, he was, like, not drafted to 50 last year. No, I when I watched him, I thought he was slow, and I didn't think for his size he was dominant enough close. Now he's completely dominant up close. Okay, look at Donovan Klingon, who's going to play tonight. Yeah. Okay, he could go probably going to go top five now. Right? Last year he came off the bench. They played Adamo Sonogo as a starter. So yeah. you got to give – but bigger guys, to your original question, yeah, the, the longer, taller you are. It's very rare that those kind of guys are coordinated and polished as a younger player. Very, very, very rare. Yeah. Is, um, you know, the psychology of Zach Eady, I, I, I always, you know, he was 6'10 in the eighth grade. And I always had this feeling that some bigs were a little socially awkward because they were bigger than their teachers. And like <laughs> Kareem was very shy. And you've, you've seen, like, a, a guy that a lot of guards have had big personalities. Like, they were the athlete. They were good looking. The girls liked him. The guys. And then you're seven feet or you're Shaq. Now, Shaq's rare. He's a very rare. Embiid, huge personality. But it is interesting. When you recruit bigs, is it a different recruiting process than a point guard? Oh, I, I, yeah. I think you're, you're, you named a few. Shaq, yeah. Joe Embiid's got, you know, he's an outgoing guy. A lot of guys. I think it's easy to become introverted because imagine Such a unique well people just staring at you i mean you, you know imagine i've been very fortunate to develop a relationship with kareem yes okay you being the coach at ucla i mean he's told me some things and shared with me some things from his youth because i'm fascinated and i'm a history guy yeah now, now i know he's the best basketball player i want to know about how you know how it was to be him yeah and it's just, you know, what, what you go through with people just staring at you. How's the, you know, how, how's the weather up there? It's like, well, would you really did you come up with that all by yourself? Yeah. I mean, can you imagine being that guy yeah. that has to listen to that every time you get in an elevator? Yeah. So I think it, it causes some of those kids to maybe go, uh, you know, become introspective and yeah. quieter, I, which is not good for your basketball development. For your athletic development, you need to be confident. You know, you, you, should, you can't have your shoulders slouched. So, right. you know, I think, again, that, as you get more comfortable with your size and who you are as a person and accept that you're just taller than everybody and and even though people look at you because of that you you, you become a better player as you it translates i like when i hear zach Eady on the mic i like him oh yeah he's, he's, got, sure, he's sure. got just enough attitude <laughs> he's just enough of a smart aleck that he's it, it's social but who was he four years ago you know, we really, that's right. You, you know, that's why, you know, you know, there's such a rush to try to, the guy comes into college. Is he a pro or not? Well, hold on. Let, let everybody's <laughs> not LeBron James, you know, no. let, let a guy develop, let it, first of all, let a boy become a man, right? When the boy becomes a man, he's going to be a better player. Cause he knows not only does he know more about the game, he knows more about rest. He knows more about what he should be focusing on. But it's just, you know, that's the world we're in with the microwave society. So John Calipari goes to Arkansas. It's obviously, it's it's a Duke, Carolina, Kansas. You got to win. You got to pr win pretty quickly. Uh, but you would inherit some good players. John can recruit his butt off. Um, it, it, what do you make of, uh, it, it, part of why I like, SEC football is they're crazy. <laughs> Part of what makes Kentucky one of the top three oh. jobs, they're a little nuts. Well, their fan base is second to none, period. Let's just, you know, I grew up 60 miles from there. What and if they called you tomorrow? 
uh, if they called me tomorrow to be their coach, <laughs> yeah, uh, I turn left on Sunset. <laughs> and when a good we, answer. Yeah, yeah. When we leave here, I'm going to the Grand Havana Room in Beverly Hills with your boss, Mark Silverman, to watch the game tonight. That's a good. That's good. Yeah, I mean, you know. Make but no, in all seriousness, it it's, it, it, it's. We talked about this last time. Um, you, you know, it, it, the jobs can be. Some of these jobs are. The expectations are so high. Incredible. That the magnitude of the job, you can't feed the beast forever. You know, and when you build the beast early, and Coach and John did, he had unbelievable success. And when you can't repeat that, it, it's it, it's really hard. It's just a hard existence. So my you know my guess would be um, that basically it was just you know time for change was his mind, you know his mindset. I mean I read something this morning about he's friends with the Tyson Chicken guy. I mean that's all speculation. I mean it's all speculation, but. You do that. That job is is. You have I to mean, give up chunks of your life. There you go, and, and that's pretty normal in our business. That basically, if you're going to be a college coach, it's really hard for people outside of our business, for pl former players or NBA guys. They can't understand that. Like yesterday, I had a Zoom call, um, you know, an hour and a half on a Sunday. Then I had one of my players over because he's from Spain, and I had to make him birthday dinner because he's sitting there by himself, turning 19. Then I've already had a, a, a Zoom call before I drove here. You, you, you know, like, it's just your normal is to work all the time right. as a college coach, and everything else is secondary. That's just like, so those are the guys that tend to be successful in our business. It's just your normal that your life is secondary. Yeah. But in th that, that job is re really different than any other job. It really is. I mean, yeah. it just is because of the fan base. And no pro sports. You get that southern tribal passion. <laughs> it was the last region to get pro sports. Yeah. So college. Well, they don't have it. College is bigger than pro. Well, there is no pro in Kentucky. Yeah. There are no pro sports in the state of Kentucky. Now, unless you want to count the the Reds AAA team yeah, in, yeah, yeah. in Louisville. Yeah. So it's the it's the show. And, and has been. That's the other thing about tradition. You know, college about tradition. It has been the only other basketball team in that state that's ever played besides Kentucky or Louisville. Or the Kentucky Colonels of the ABA. Yeah, I remember that was Artis Gilmore or something like that. There was Dan Issel. Yeah, I mean, I was young, man. <laughs> you're, I'm old. You're not that much older than me. Great seeing you again. Always a pleasure. I appreciate you having me. Hi, everybody. It's me, Uncle Colin. Subscribe here to get the latest from the herd, including exclusive behind-the-scenes videos and more, wherever you may be, however you may be watching. Thanks again for making us part of your day.